what joy we have experienced in the past. We might think about what joy we hope for in the future. And those are kind of where our reflections uh, usually reside, or at least for me, has always resided. Until I read our reading from Zephaniah this morning. Have you ever considered that possibly the joy that we reflect upon today is not our joy? Not joy found on our side of the eternal scale, but it is God's joy. A reading from Zephaniah is encouraging, it is triumphant, it is celebratory, not because of what it shows about our lives but what it shows about God and how God feels for us. Some Bibles have subject headings uh, printed in bold above passages. My Bible has the heading, The Song of Joy, but it's not sung, it's not sung from us. The joy is not ours. The song of joy is the song that God sings, that God sings because of you. God delights in you. God rejoices in you. God sings songs of joy about your presence in this world. So I invite you to pick up your Bibles and turn to Zephaniah chapter 3. If you need help finding it, it is right before Haggai, so that should should help. Um, It's page 981 of of your Old Testament in your Bibles. Zephaniah is not a book of the Bible that we read a whole lot of. It's one of those small itty-bitty prophets that kind of get pushed off to the back and we don't really uh, spend a lot of time with. Zephaniah kind of gets a little ignored. But the closing verses of our reading today is beautiful beyond compare. And I think that our passage holds up uh, two images which are powerful and and arresting for us. Now, I know that some people were out with the Sunday school, so uh, in case you missed it, uh, verse 17, which is a wonderful verse, reads this. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. These verses, they're not about what we produce. It's not about what we do or about what we give. It's not about what um, we cultivate or deserve or elicit from God. These verses are set resoutly in the heart of God. And so there is nothing that we can do to affect the truthfulness of this verse. And the truth is, That God rejoices over you. The image that this conveys in my mind is an image of a newborn. And you might recognize the scene. When Solomon was first born, Elisha would often get up in the middle of the night and go get Solomon from the crib. Not because he was crying, not because... Uh, he needed changing, not because he was needed feeding, but because in those moments she just longed to be with him in great delight. She wished to be in his presence, and she would go and take him from the crib while he was unaware, and she would hold him and rock him, and I'm pretty sure there was some singing. You know that Robert Munch book, I'll Love You Forever, right? I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. It's a fabulous image. Of course, outside the house, the scene could have been much different, right? It could be cold, it could be stormy, there might have been sirens blustering about, um, all sorts of kind of craziness in the world. For Alicia herself, there might have been stuff going on in life, holiday stress, work stress, personal stress, whatever. But in that room, in that place, that was a sanctuary. Kind of created in that room. 
their love and joy and intimacy, it pushed everything else away. I think that image is even more powerful when we realize that we are not newborns anymore. But can we not still see ourselves in this reality? Can we not imagine God's presence, even while we are unaware, while we're sleeping, or while we're going about on our lives, that God comes, takes you in God's own arms, rocks you in his joy, and sings. The blessed proclamation today is that you are the object of God's sweet affection. So often we talk about the truth of God's abiding, God being with us, and that is pronounced uh, in several places in our reading. It's the heart of the incarnation. It's heart of what Christmas is all about. Several times in our reading, uh, Zephaniah speaks about it. Verse 15, The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. Verse 17, the Lord your God is in your midst. Verse 20, at that time I will bring you in. At that time I will gather you. But the incarnation, God's presence with us, that we remember, is not a dry and emotionless presence. Sometimes I wonder if we think that God is so big that God kind of exists beyond emotion. Right? That God doesn't really have any emotions. The love of God becomes kind of a doctrine to believe in, but it's not a feeling to be expressed or an emotion to be shared. But here in our reading, there is emotion. There is grand desire. He rejoices over you with gladness, it says. There is joy. Consider that, that, just that small two-word phrase, over you. He rejoices over you. He sings over you. Not over what you have done. Not over your accomplishments. Not over your activity. Not over anything else that you can cultivate or create yourself. God, the Lord who is present, rejoices over you because of who you are over you as created by God in God's image, over you for who you are and for the fact that you are. And he sings. Like a parent intoxicated by the smell of their newborn child, God sings. God sings because there are some joys that cannot be expressed in words but come exploding out of the very depths. God sings. God sings aloud, and all of heaven can hear it and understand the reason that God sings, and it is you. What would it look like for you to stop and listen for God's joyful song? Imagine if we made this the first thought in the morning. You know, in that place where we lie in our beds and we exist for a little while, kind of between sleep and awake, that, that kind of wonderful spot. Imagine if you thought in that morning or just rehearsed that verse, the Lord my God is with me, a mighty God who is mighty to save. He rejoices over me with gladness. He quiets me in his love. He exalts over me with singing. Imagine if we held that as we walk through our day. God's song is always being sung. Sometimes we don't hear it. Through the noise and the hustle and bustle of our lives, sometimes we drown it out, but it is always singing. In fact, this reading is quite wonderful uh, when we consider the context. Because every other passage of Zephaniah is quite harsh. Zephaniah talks about uh, the corruption of Israel, the evil going around that surrounds Jerusalem at that time. The nation is in upheaval. Everything is in complete turmoil, and they don't know, as a nation, which way to go, what they're going to do, or what's going to happen. But cutting through all of that whirlwind, shining through all of that blackness, is the words, On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not. 
Let your hands not grow weak. The Lord your God is in the midst of you. And what that proclamation does is it quiets us. It renews us. It settles us. It soothes us. Sure, it may not make the whirlwind stop or the stress fully go away. But that joy of God, the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, the joy which radiates from God's presence, brings an internal restedness. We kind of lean back and rest within God's love which upholds us. Charles Spurgeon wrote in one of his sermons, It is blessed living to know that we breathe an atmosphere purified and made fragrant with divine love, that love protects us while we sleep hanging like a silken curtain around all our bed, and love opens the eyelids of the morning to smile upon us when we wake. We are compassed about with love, above, beneath, around, within, without. If we could but recognize this, we should become as flames of fire, ardent and fervent towards our God. He quiets you in his love. And he rejoices over you with singing. And in that place where we become enfolded in that joyful song, there is healing, there is strength, and there is nourishment. Now I said at the beginning that there were two images to look at. Uh, There are actually two songs which are happening in this reading. There is the one which God sings over us in joy and in love. It is initiated by God and we are the happy recipients. The second song is ours. Our reading began at verse 14. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all of your heart. We are invited to live in the song of God and to join our voices to it. This is not just the image of God singing a solo, and either we hear it or we miss it, like the music in the mall. This is the image of a glorious choir of joy, a heavenly chorus. God's joyful song comes into our lives, and it shapes us. Again, the rest of Zephaniah describes darkness and struggle, but the people of faith are encouraged to be defined by God's joyful presence and to live out fervently, exuberantly, that song of praise. They are encouraged to open up themselves to the song of joy so much that they learn the tune and they begin to sing it themselves. Can you join in that song? Can you sing the song of joy in your own soul? in your own heart. I know of people who are going through hard times. I know of people who are questioning. I know of people who wonder if they can really trust Jesus. My prayer for you, my prayer for me, my prayer for all of us, is that we hear the song of joy, That hearing it, we dare to believe in it just enough to become aware of God's presence that is with us. And before the worries and the questions and all the doubts might come erupting in our mind once again, that we be able to receive that joy into our lives and allow that to kind of go deep into our, our souls and become us implanted in us. May we hear his singing. May we sing ourselves. The Lord, your God, is with you. A mighty God, mighty to save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He quiets you in his love. And he exalts over you with singing.
but all of us who have ears, let us hear. Amen.